All right. Thanks, guys. It is great to be back. Finally back home from Tampa Bay, Florida. Uh, definitely a good trip. It was a business trip uh, in my real life. I uh, work for, uh, it's about a $220 million company. And uh, we uh, acquired a business down there in the Tampa region. Uh, about a $100 million company. And uh, we acquired it for, uh, I think, uh, the final asking price was like $66 million. So uh, uh, definitely a good deal for uh, the place I work at. And uh, it was a very, very important acquisition. And it was something that uh, I had to be a part of and uh, go ahead and uh, travel to Tampa. So it was nice down there. Got to see a spring training game. It was actually uh, at Steinbr uh, Steinbrenner Field, uh, Yankees and the Phils. And uh, really cool because uh, they played the uh, the starters. They played the stars till uh, the fifth inning. So I uh, got to see a lot of guys. John Carlos Stanton uh, hit a ball that is still in orbit right now. Hit that off of uh, Sir Anthony Dominguez. But a really good time down in Florida. But I'm, I'm back home. I missed you guys so much, and uh, I'm ready to get back to work for you. So let's go ahead and begin in the NBA, and we're going to begin with Atlanta at Boston, 12:30 Eastern tip-off in Beantown. The Celtics open 10 and a half, total 231 and a hook. And since the markets opened this one up, look at that. Didn't even have time to iron the shirt. Look at that wrinkly ass shirt right out of the bag. But anyway, uh, since the markets opened that one up, uh, we're seeing a slight fade of Boston when it comes to the spread. We're also seeing movement upward on the total as well. That line moved up to 232 and a half, spread at 10. So once again, the Celtics open 10 and a half, down to minus 10. Total open 231 and a half, up to 232 and a hook. 53% are leaning Boston. 57% of the consensus is shaded toward the under. And at the moment, the Hawks are plus 425 on the money line. Now, Rozier and Thies are still questionable for tonight's act, uh, this afternoon's action for Boston. Uh, but regardless, the Celtics are 25-10 and 10 straight up on their home court. Uh, they also rank third in the NBA in defensive field goal percentage at home. Now, Lano on the other side, they are last in points allowed. They're also 0-3 against the number taking on Boston this season. When it comes to the total, Atlanta's 2-1 to the under, taking on the Celtics. Uh, Boston 6-3 to the under in their last nine. Give me the Celtics minus 10, getting the job done against the number at the TD Garden. And the under 232 and a half in that matchup there. Before we go ahead and move on, just want to take a quick time out and once again welcome you to the show. Got some lines of personal leans out for Saturday's NBA, college basketball, and NHL action. Uh, it is March 16th. Happy 316 day, uh, whether it's uh, John 316, Austin 316, however you want to celebrate it. Uh, it is March 16th, man, and uh, feeling pretty good. St. Patty's Day coming up. Uh, but anyway, just want to quickly remind you to check me out on my website. That is patreon.com slash Brock Page. Plenty of free content there. And uh, we give uh, we give out a, a, a daily play, at least one play a day, for the measly price of $1.99 per month. So anyway, check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page. Link is in the description section below. And if you are a current patron of mine and you're watching me right now, I simply cannot thank you, to, uh, thank you enough. You most certainly make it all worth it. Let's go ahead and hop back into some more lines and personal leans. All starts Eastern Standard Time. And on deck, we've got Memphis at Washington, 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off in the nation's capital. The Wizards open minus three, total 224. Not a whole lot of movement in this one. We're seeing a slight fade of Washington when it comes to the spread. They're down to two and a half. So once again, Washington to open minus three, down to minus two and a half. Totals 224, 75% shaded toward the under, 51% leaning toward Memphis. And at the moment, the Grizzlies are plus 120 on the money line. Now, Sadoransky is still questionable for Washington uh, dealing with that concussion problem. Uh, regardless, though, the Wizards are 6-1 and one against the spread in their last seven. 4-1 and one ATS in their last five at home. This Washington offense is scoring 117 points per contest on average on their home court. And they are shooting 45.5% from the field. Uh, Memphis on their side of things, they're just 28 and 41 straight up overall for the year. They've also covered just five out of 15 games uh, that tipped off at the current point spread. Memphis also ranks dead last in road defensive scoring. They're averaging just 101 points per contest in that category there. Now, total wise, Memphis is 73 to the under in their last 10 on the road. <clears throat> Washington, 4 1 to the under in their last five. 
Give me the Wizards minus two and a half and the under 224. Hook Watch still going on. I gave Hook Watch a fighting chance by not uploading for two days straight. So I think we're on like day seven of Hook Watch. Let me know in the comments section below uh, which day we are on when it comes to Hook Watch. And if you're not familiar with Hook Watch, um, it is uh, the time uh, where I stopped buying the hook. And we're on, I think, day seven that we didn't get burned. By a measly half a point. All right, next game, Suns at the Pelicans. 7 o'clock tip-off in New Orleans. The Pels are minus one, total 232 and a half. 67% are leaning Phoenix, 80% shaded toward the under. Right now, the Suns are plus 100 on the money line. Uh, Tyler Johnson questionable with a knee for Phoenix. Meanwhile, New Orleans has Holiday still out indefinitely. Uh, New Orleans is 2-0 against the spread, taking on Phoenix. Their offense is averaging 116 points per contest. <clears throat> Phoenix ranks dead last in the NBA in offensive rebounding. They also rank second to last in defensive field goal percentage. Uh, they've won just 5 out of 25 games straight up uh, in their last 25. Now, total-wise, Phoenix is 6-1 to the under in their last 7. New Orleans, 50% to the under in their games at home. Give me the Pels, minus one. This line is fishy, but I'm going to make the square play. I'm not sharp. I'm square. Give me the Pels, minus one. And the under 232.5 in that matchup there. Next game, Cavaliers, Mavericks, 830 tip-off in Dallas. The Mavs open minus six, total 215. Now, in this one, we're seeing movement on both the spread and the total. We're seeing movement upward on the total and upward on the spread as Coach K looking very pale and ghastly. Uh, but anyway, Dallas minus six and a half, total 215 and a half. Once again, the Mavs open minus six, up to minus six and a half, total open 215, up to 215 and a hook. 66% are leaning Dallas, 67% shaded toward the under. Right now, Cleveland's plus 220 on the money line. Della Vadova and Larry Nance Jr., both questionable for the Cavs. They're, uh, they're also just 1-6 straight up in their last 7 on the road. They failed to cover in 8 out of their last 12 on the road as well. Dallas 3-1 ATS in their last 4. 22-12 ATS at home. They also rank 6th in home points allowed. Now, when it comes to the total, Dallas is 4-1 of the over in their last five at home, taking on Cleveland if you're into historical trends. And uh, Cleveland, 4-2 to the under in their last six when traveling. Give me the Dallas Mavericks, minus 6.5, and, and the over 215.5 in that matchup there. Next game, Warriors-Thunder, 8.30 tip-off in Oklahoma City. Golden State open 1.5, total 228.5, and, and since that one opened up, not a whole lot of movement in that matchup there. Although we are seeing a slight fade of Golden State when it comes to the spread. <clears throat> they move down to minus one. So once again, Golden State open one and a half down to minus one. Total open and remains at 228 and a half. Right now, OKC is minus 105 on the money line. Uh, I'm turning this way. My right hand hurts when I hold this because it's heavy. It's so packed with information and density. But anyway, uh, Kevin Durant questionable with an ankle for Golden State. Meanwhile, for OKC, uh, Morris is questionable with a neck. OKC is also just 3-10 and 10 ATS in their last 13. 1-4 ATS in their last 5 at home. Golden State 14-3 and three straight up in their last 17 on the road. And when it comes to scoring, Golden State 4-1 and one to the under in their last 5 on the road. Give me Golden State minus 1 in the under 228.5 in that matchup there. Next game, Trail Blazers, Spurs, 8.30 tip-off in San Antonio. The Spurs open minus one, total 225 and a half. We're seeing movement downward on the total and upward on the spread. San Antonio is now minus two, total 224 and a half. 59% are leading San Antonio, 62% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Blazers are plus 110 on the money line. Now, Portland's just 2-3 and three against the number in their last five. 2-4 and four ATS in their last six, taking on San Antonio, if you're into historical trends. Portland ranks 25th in defending the three ball on the road. Meanwhile, San Antonio ranks first in shooting the three ball on their home court. They're averaging 42.4% in that category there. San Antonio, really big potential to rack up some points from beyond the arc. 
they're also on a seven-game win streak. San Antonio, 7-0 and straight up in their last seven. 6-1 and against the number in that same category. They're also 4-1 and ATS in their last five at home. Now, total-wise, San Antonio, 7-1 and to the under in their last eight. Portland, 2-0 and to the under in their last two. Give me San Antonio minus two in the under 224.5 in that matchup there. Next game. Don't let me forget that last one, guys. We're at the second to last game, but my notes are mixed up. So if I start to skip it, just yell at your screen and tell me to stop. All right. Anyway, Pacers, Nuggets, 9 o'clock tip-off in Denver. Denver open minus 8, total 215. We're just seeing movement downward on the total in this one. That moved down to 214. So once again, Denver is minus 8, total open 215, down to 214. 51% are leaning Indiana, 70% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Pacers are plus 255 on the money line. Uh, Tyreek Evans probable for the Pacers. Uh, Torrey Craig questionable with a shoulder for the Nuggets. Now, Denver's just 3-4 and four straight up in their last seven. 3-4 and four against the spread in that same category. They rank 20th from the stripe, and they've also covered just three out of nine games played at the current point spread. Now, Indiana on their side of things, 2-0 and oh straight up in their last two. They rank first in the NBA in defensive points allowed. They also rank second in the association in road defensive rebounding. Now, total-wise, Indiana's 5-1 to the over in their last six, taking on Denver. Meanwhile, the Nuggets are 9-2 to the over in their last 11 at home, taking on Indiana. So if you're into historical trends, I had a bunch for you right there when it came to the scoring. But uh, I am going to lean toward a road dog in this one, baby. I love leaning toward those dogs. I rarely do it. Uh, I'm a very square guy, as you can tell with my glasses and wrinkly shirt. But I like the Pacers covering the number. Give me Indiana plus eight and the over 214 in that matchup there. All right, let's slide into some NCAA college basketball conference championship tournaments. We're going to begin in the Big Ten. Wisconsin taking on Sparty, one o'clock tip off. Michigan State open four and a half, total 129 in 